Hi everyone! In this video I'm going to show you how I do the pruning of my roses. This video will consist of two different segments. One was filmed one week ago and another is filmed today. The reason is because pruning is done in two stages. So very important in June what you can do for your rose when your rose is blooming is to make sure that uh, during the drought times your rose has plenty of water and uh, what I do usually during this time I am not allowing rose to form uh, uh, rose hips because I want to prolong these blooms. What rose is trying to do right now as you can see here you see this rose is uh, finish its blooms so what will happen the blooms will fall off right and here we will have a newly formed hip, rose hip. The bottom part of this rose hip will start uh, becoming bigger and more rounder. And then rose will spend actually a lot of energy trying to create this uh, um, seed head. Uh, I read somewhere that rhododendron bushes, when they are ready to set the, the when they are ready to finish blossoming, they are setting their seeds they can spend as much as 70% of their energy. Just imagine, 70% of the energy of the bush goes into creating seeds. And when you deadhead the rose or the dendrum or other plants in your garden, you are redirecting that energy into creating more blooms. So how do you deadhead? Very simple. One, two, three, very enjoying procedure to do. This is probably the best procedure to do in the garden. So what I do, I just snap these uh, spent blossoms and uh, when I do that, when uh, roses are not, you see when the rose is not falling yet, I'm not letting all these petals to fall on the ground and just mess it up. Now just look at these roses look, they look kind of done. So I just cut them and with my fingers and I make sure that I don't throw this goodness into the garbage, I compost it. Uh, I, put, I have special black uh, bags and I just throw all my compost in those black bags and through the year it decomposes and turns into a, a good quality dirt. So this is it, what to do about this rose. Just take all these blooms out and new blooms, just come here, I will show you something. You see this thing? It's a little bit early in the season. But you see what happens here? I took the bloom out and see what happens? A new shoot is coming. Actually, it's full of aphids. Ay, 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 I have to spray them. Okay, so a new shoot is coming and this would be a new rose, maybe in two, three weeks. So this will start blooming. This little shoot will be blooming later this summer. So this is what you will be doing, taking down all the uh, spent blooms if you want your rose to continue blooming for you. All right, so looks like I did my job. It's done very quickly. Look, everything looks fresh and nice. You don't even notice that Rose lost its um, old spent blooms. Right here, one more. One week later, approximately, and this is how roses are looking after just light deadheading, when all the uh, spent blooms are done. As you can see, Rose is shooting bigger stems out and still producing uh, roses on these stems. And uh, I keep them because I want to enjoy some blooms still with this rose. Generally, when I trim this rose, you see how I wanted to uh, produce a homogeneous effect, like a round shape of the rose. You don't want rose to have awkward shape in your garden. Now, these guys, when they spend their blooms, I can do two things with them now. With them now, I can either cut them 
right here close to the stem and bring these blooms inside or I can wait for them to finish blooming and then I do the cutting all the way uh, just in front of the leaf I will cut them out again go to the uh, form the shape of the bush you want it to be always remember that you are the one to form the shape of the bush not uh, bush shouldn't dictate you how the bush should behave you can influence the bush one advice which I wish somebody would give me when I was just starting my garden. I was watching these wonderful shows about uh, Italian gardens, about English gardens, about the gardens in Texas, in uh, um, Northwest. And I was thinking, oh my goodness, they're growing this and this is how they do it. And I can do the same in my garden. No, you can't do that. You can't look at people gardening in England and decide that you can do the same in your garden. Because we live on the land where we live. We live, I live in Connecticut, it's northeast, and gardening in northeast, especially taking care of the rose in northeast, would be so different than in southeast or southwest or in plains area. Because rose behaves differently. In the south, rose blossoms so much longer. People in the south have to feed their rose twice or three times or four times even, I believe. And then uh, guys in the south put their roses to sleep so much, not to sleep, to, uh, to hibernate so much later than we do. I wish I knew it when I was a um, beginning gardener. I'm still not a, a pro gardener, but I know a little bit now that I can't look at folks in England and say, ooh, this is how I do it. I trim my roses in February. No, in our northeast, this is what the basic care is with the rose. March, April, when rose starts to wake up from dormancy, that's the time when we uh, trim the rose, when we give it a maintenance trimming. Uh, April, rose keeps growing. In June, rose start uh, blooming. And in April, we should feed our roses. In June, our roses will start blooming. After the first flush of bloom, we deadhead, we cut out low ste long stems. I will show you how I do it. And then we give our roses another feeding time. And then roses goes into summer. We make sure that during summer we water our roses very well. We deadhead our roses very well. And then November, October, November, we put our roses into dormancy. We make sure we cover the roots and put our roses to sleep for winter. So this is a basic care for roses in Northeast where I live. Okay. There are two stages in pruning our roses. The first one, we do it during the, the big blooming time when we have to take dead roses as i showed you in my previous video what i was doing i was just taking dead roses off right snapping them off but the second stage is when rose is done blooming almost and it starts producing these long stems so what do you do with those long stems i let them blossom you see how tall this guy is he's unsightly here but i'm waiting for this beautiful baby baby rose to bloom and then I will cut it right here to this first leaf right on top of the leaf just like I did here you see so you can't so you you look around and you don't really see these sticks coming up here I didn't do this come here and I will show you you see this how I probably just snapped it with my fingers but now look how it looks it doesn't look good but if I do this and here this it will look very natural. It's not going to look unsightly. Now this beautiful rose, the story with this rose is also almost the same. The only thing different from uh, between climbing and shrub rose is that I let these beautiful long shoots go up and they are very valuable in climbing roses you see how wonderful and tall this fellow is in shrub roses i will trim it because i don't want my shrub rose to go tall but in climbing roses i'm going to train this shoot eventually to go around and form a new body of this what happens there 
just take a look at this beautiful fellow right here. Look how tall he is. He's growing nice and tall. And in uh, shrub roses, come here closer, I will show you. In shrub roses, I will cut him out. I wouldn't want him to be so tall. But he is a climbing roses. I really appreciate him because he's going to take over some dead stems, which I'm going to cut out. You see this dead stem? It's totally dead. Before it was somewhat okay, but now it's just dying off. So I'm going to take this down. I will just trim it in spring during my annual big trim. But this guy will carry the show. And since he's so nice and young, he will produce a lot of beautiful flowers and he will be strong and healthy and he will continue living. Now this rose got a haircut. When you come and look closer, the reason why I was just snapping all the flowers which were spent. And you see how this, this doesn't look good. So what I do, I take it down here. And look, it's, it's hidden. You see, the rose doesn't show any signs of spent blooms, unsightly, unsightly things. And when you look here, look, you don't even notice any uh, sticks. Here we go. You see, you don't, it looks very nice. Rose is hiding its, uh, its stems. Well, I cut them out. So this is basically what I do during the first stage of trimming. And next stage is coming maybe in a week or so when these uh, long stems will finish blooming and I will just trim them in. I probably will trim this one right here near this leaf. This way the shape of the rose would be again um, around the arch. Of course, this rose is doing multifunctional purpose in our garden. It not only serves as a blossoming rose in June, it also serves as a vertical structure for us in the garden. So it's like a passageway to our backyard here, and this rose carries it very well. So we have blooms, but also this rose serves us as almost like an architectural element in the garden. Two important things to consider. Here we go. Isopropyl alcohol, very important. What you do with it, well, what I do with it, when I finish spraying my roses, this is what I do. I disinfect my tools. Isopropyl alcohol is, uh, is a good disinfectant. It doesn't ruin the, the blades. It's very low toxic. It's not toxic to me. It doesn't have bad fumes. Perfect thing to do with your clippers or your trimmers. Why do we do that? In case one of your roses has diseases, you don't want to spread it to other roses. And it's just generally a good garden habit to have. Just to give it a, tr a spray and you're done. You may, everything is on these uh, clippers would be gone, whatever disease there might be there. I cut some flowers for our vase in the garden. We are going to enjoy them. I hope my video was helpful to you and you learned something uh, to use in your gardens to take care of your roses. I hope to see you next time. In my next video, I'm going to talk extensively how I feed our roses after the first bloom. Happy gardening and I will see you next time. And, uh, uh, and that and and such <laughs> okay i will cut it out <laughs>